Orion Township celebrated the beautification of a parcel of land on the southern border of the township made possible with a grant from American Bloom. Fire Prevention Week kicked off on October 9th and the Orion Township Fire Department celebrated with an open house at station number one. Homecoming Week kicked off with a parade in the village and fun events throughout the week, including the Powder Puff Game on Thursday and the Homecoming Game on Friday where a new king and queen were crowned at halftime. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Although winter is right around the corner, that didn't prevent Orion Township from recently planting flowers and greenery to greet visitors as they enter the township. On Thursday, October 6th, Orion Township dignitaries, including members of the Corridor Improvement Authority Board, gathered on a parcel of land located near the intersection of Jocelyn and Brown Road. The group was celebrating the completion of a landscaping project that greets travelers as they travel north into Orion Township from Auburn Hills. That's a big smile. Three, two, one, cut! <laughs> this gateway beautification project is the result of a $25,000 grant from Canadian National Railway and administered by American in Bloom. Orion Township Chief of Staff Samantha Temko submitted the grant request last year and was notified that Orion Township was one of 10 recipients in the spring of 2022. We have uh, a working relationship with CN Railway and they give us the money for the grants, but, but we administer the grant program. So we give 10 grants a year to communities that are along the rail lines of CN. Oh, wow. So it, they've got to be in that. And, and CN comes into the states from Canada as far east as westernmost Pennsylvania, as far west as Minnesota, the western side of Minnesota, and it funnels uh, in Illinois all the way to the Gulf Coast. They came out and did a two a two full day assessment. Uh, we had someone come from Chicago and someone from England, and they spent two days with uh, myself and uh, Trustee Dalrymple, Trustee Urbanowski, other staff, Jenny Body, uh, and really toured our community, made tons of recommendations. And it's interesting because we got the report back this week, and we didn't get all A's, <laughs> and it's okay because they gave us so many ideas of things we can do. Um, that will that, that will make us even better. So, and that's kind of the goal here is partnering with a group like this. It's not just the grant dollars; it's their expertise. You know, they have experts literally from around the world. On Saturday, October 1st, a delegation made up of Chief of Staff Samantha Temko and Trustees Julia Dalrymple and Kim Urbanowski attended an award ceremony in St. Louis, where Orion Township was presented with the Community Vitality Award from America in Bloom. Yeah, so we received one of the highest honors that they give out nationwide uh, for our community, which was incredible. Yes, so trustees Dalrymple and Urbanowski and then Sam Timko were in St. Louis just this past week. Um, we didn't know we were going to win this award. It's, the high, it's, like I said, one of the highest honors they give nationwide. And that was a direct result of them visiting our community and seeing the effort and the focus we put on our green spaces and plants and things like that. And like I said, we're only looking to grow that. Matter of fact, in the next couple weeks, we'll be asking the board to approve a couple hundred thousand dollars in plant plantings all along the Baldwin corridor to even spruce that up even more. So we're excited about it. We know it's important for people to love where they live. And we think that having that, those pops of color all around town are, are one of those things that sets, sets us apart. Fire Prevention Week celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2022 and runs from October 9th through October 15th. The Orange Township Fire Department got in on the fun with an open house, its first since 2019. On Sunday, October 9th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to Fire Station 1 in the village for an open house. Approximately four to 500 visitors enjoyed a beautiful fall day as the station provided cider and donuts, a bounce house, games and activities, and even Sparky the Fire Dog made an appearance. We have Home Depot on site, we have Prevention, we have our smoke trailer that we uh, own jointly with a couple other fire departments. We have our new command truck behind me, our new engine behind us, our new rescue. So we're here showing off uh, our equipment that the township has provided for us and the citizens voted yes to provide with our 24-7 uh, coverage. 
The Orion Township Fire Department is made up of four stations, including Station 1 near Children's Park in the Village. The Firefighters and Administration provides 24-7 coverage and is on pace to make 3,500 to 4,000 runs this year. The National Fire Prevention Association has been promoting Fire Prevention Week since 1922. President Calvin Coolidge proclaimed it to be a national observance in 1925. Fire Prevention Week coincides with the anniversary of the Great Chicago Fire, which began on October 8th in 1871 and claimed more than 250 lives and caused devastating damage. Uh, the reason we do this in October is because this is Fire Prevention Month, so we want to learn, teach people, teach kids especially, that, you know, stop, drop, and roll, get out, you know, don't stay in a fire, don't touch hot stuff, don't, you know, play with stoves, don't play with matches, and, uh, you know, try to be safe. Do you think October's a good time for families to check those smoke detectors? I think, you know, you got to check them every six months, so October's great in the fall. you got to do fall cleaning and get ready, so always check those batteries, you know, every six months fall being one of them in October. The theme of the 2022 campaign is fire won't wait, plan your escape. Families are encouraged to practice simple but important actions they can take to keep themselves and those around them safe from home fires. For more information, visit nfpa.org. Lake Orion High School celebrated homecoming week with fun events at the high school and the homecoming football game on Friday. Things kicked off with a parade in the village that invited the entire community to come out. On the afternoon of Sunday, October 2nd, Lake Orion residents lined the streets of the downtown area for the annual homecoming parade. Participants gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary School before heading out on Florence Street. The parade traveled west on Flint Street, then turned north on Broadway before coming to an end at the Eamon Center. The police department's 1941 Ford police car led the way with representatives of all of Lake Orion schools following behind. Student groups, athletes, and of course, the marching band were greeted with cheers from the enthusiastic crowd. The homecoming court was introduced by student advisor Lori Hogan with one lucky couple hoping to be crowned king and queen during Friday night's football game. Next up, we have our senior couples with Patrick Rowland and Sophie Strane. Sophie's a member of the golf team and the varsity softball team. Patrick is a member and a captain of the varsity football team and a member of the leadership class. Give it up for Patrick and Sophie. Next up, we have Evan Rawlings and Grace Hensley. Evan is a member of the varsity baseball and football teams, and Grace is part of our parade committee. She planned the parade today. Shout out to Evan and Grace. Next up, we have Nick Eaton and Marissa Feliciano Grenberry. Nick is a member of the varsity football team. Marissa is a member of the leadership class and the chair of the Ello Lotto Committee. Give it up for Nick and Marissa. Our next senior couple is Avery Case and Nick Heist. Avery is a member of the leadership class and a member of the varsity softball team. Nick is on the varsity golf team and you can find Nick wearing the dragon costume at varsity football games on Friday night. Give it up for Nick and Avery. And our final senior couple today is Nick News and Grace Sullivan. Nick is a member of the varsity baseball team. Grace is on the varsity soccer and basketball teams. She's the secretary of the leadership class. Let's give it up for Nick and Grace. A week of fun events led up to the eagerly anticipated Powder Puff football game on Thursday, where the ladies representing the junior class faced a determined senior class. Then the Dragons varsity football team hosted the Clarkson Wolves on Friday in a thriller and a new homecoming king and queen were crowned. Owen TV's Joe Johnson was on the sidelines for both games and he has all the exciting highlights. On the evening of Thursday, October 6th, the ladies of the class of 2023 took on the class of 2024 in the annual Powder Puff game at Dragon Stadium. The game was scoreless until the juniors punted to the seniors. With 8.06 left in the first, quarterback Chloe Wiegers is in shotgun. She takes the snap, hands off to Audrey Llewellyn, and she is gone. 
75 yards into the end zone for the first score of the game. The extra point was good and the seniors are on top 7-0. With just 50 seconds left in the first half, the seniors are at the junior's 35-yard line with a first and 10. Wiegers is in shotgun. She launches a perfectly thrown pass into the hands of Maddie Ebert at the 10, and she goes in for the score. The extra point was good, 14-0 at the half. That's when the sky opened up and the players and fans got soaked, but everyone seemed to be having too much of a good time to care and the game resumed with the second half. The juniors lined up to kick off to the seniors. Bella Spears fields the kickoff inside the 20. She goes right, evades tacklers, and turns on the Jets. Touchdown, seniors. The extra point was no good, but the seniors take a commanding lead, 20-0. Later, with 4.08 left in the third, the seniors have a first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Number 42, Avery Case, brings down a high snap and takes off running. She finds the end zone and the seniors are running away with it. The PAT was good and the seniors extend their lead 27-0. Let's go to the fourth. The juniors are moving the ball and have a first and 10 at the 30. Number 13, Alexandra Fouts takes the snap and goes in for the touchdown. The juniors avoid the shutout and are finally on the scoreboard. The PAT was good, and that's how the game would end the final 27-7 seniors. <laughs> 24 hours later, the 3-3 three three Lake Orion Dragons took to the field to host the 4-2 Clarkston Wolves for the homecoming game. Lake Orion kicked off to Clarkston, and they began their first drive from their own 20 on second and eight, quarterback Mike Hine hands off to senior Ethan Clark, who finds a hole and goes 78 yards untouched into the end zone. And just like that, the Wolves are up 7-0 following the length and extra point. With 8.25 left in the first, the Dragons field a punt and begin a drive at midfield. On first and 10 at the 53, quarterback T.R. Hill pitches it to junior Ray Payne, who goes right and is taken down on the 26 for a 27-yard gain. On second and 10 at the 23, Hill takes the snap, jukes the defender, and goes up the middle for the touchdown. Hoffman's PAT was good, and the score is tied 7-7 with 7.36 left in the first. Following the kickoff, Clarkston begins a drive at their own 20. With Hine and shotgun, he takes the snap and botches the handoff. Senior Patrick Rowland scoops it up and takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Dragons. With seven and a half left in the first quarter, the Dragons are on top, 14-7. On the following drive, Clarkson moves the ball down the field and on third and 10 from the 15, Hine hands off to Clark. He fakes the reverse, weaves his way past his blockers, and reaches the end zone for his second score of the game. The score is tied 14-14 with 2.53 left in the first. <laughs> Following a Lake Orion punt, the Wolves begin a drive on their own 43. On third and seven from the Dragons 27, Clark takes the handoff and is tackled on the one yard line. On the next play, Hine keeps it and goes right untouched into the end zone. The PAT was good and the Wolves are back on top, 21-14, with 11-22 left in the second quarter. Following another Lake Orion punt, Clarkston begins a drive from their own 40. Clark takes the direct snap, pitches it to quarterback Hine, and he goes deep to a wide open Cole Jarvis. A hustling Joey Bruno makes a TD saving tackle, but Two plays later on second and goal, number five, Desmond Steven bowls his way into the end zone with Clark clearing the way with a block. The PAT was good and the Wolves were up two scores with 7.48 left in the first half. Following the kickoff, the Dragons begin to drive on their own 27. A holding call moves the ball back to the 15. Then T.R. Hill takes the snap, cuts left, follows the blockers and streaks down the sideline they can't catch it, and it's 85 yards into the end zone to close the gap, 28-21 with 7.16 left in the second. 
Then with 326 left in the half, Clarkston has the ball on Lake Orion's 46, facing a second and nine. Hein throws a screen and it is picked off by junior Caden to Fraffenreed. He takes it to the house for a 54 yard pick six. The PAT ties it up at 28, what a game. But before the half can end, Clarkston quarterback Hein gives his team great field position on a 45 yard run. And on second and goal with the clock ticking, Clark goes up the middle and scores. The Wolves regain the lead, 35-28 at the half. At halftime, student advisor Lori Hogan introduced the homecoming court to the crowd. Last year's king and queen, Jackson Ben and Paige Walker returned to Dragon Stadium to crown the 2022 king and queen. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your cameras ready. Jackson, will you please crown king? Nick News. And Paige, will you do us the honors and please crown the homecoming queen, Grace Sullivan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all of our participants and their honors and families. We are proud to call you all dragons and we're proud that you represent us as a community in school. We're thankful for all the pride you've given us and the joy you bring. Again, a warm round of applause for all of our 2022 homecoming court members and their families. Let's get back to the action. In the fourth quarter, the Dragons find themselves backed up against their own end zone. Hill is under center. He takes the snap and drops back to pass, but is wrapped up and sacked in the end zone for a safety. 37-28 Clarkston. On the next drive, Clarkston is facing a third and six at Lake Orange 42 when Clark takes the ball all the way to the 12-yard line. On the next play, Clark lunges for the end zone to extend Clarkston's lead 43-28. Then a successful two-point conversion gives the Wolves a 45-28 lead. With 4-11 left in the game, the Dragons are facing second and 21 from Clarkston's 26 when T.R. Hill lofts a perfect pass into the waiting hands of older brother Dorian Hill. Touchdown, Lake Horry. The PAT pulls the Dragons to within 10, 45-35. With 1-26 left in the game on first and 10 from the 26, Hill hits number 11, Dominic Novak, and he is taken down at the two. On the next play, Billy Roberson goes in for the score to close the gap. The PAT was no good, and the Dragons are down by four points. The Dragons line up again for another onside kick. The ball bounces off a Clarkson player, and the Dragons fall on it. They still have a chance to win this thing, but with 47 seconds left, the Dragons have a third and seven at midfield. The snap is mishandled, and the Wolves recover Game over, the final 45-42 Clarkston. What a finish. We caught up with head coach Chris Bell after the game. We played hard. I don't know, well might be, in my eyes, might be exaggerated a little bit. The, it, we've got to clean up our own mistakes. You know, from, uh, you know, our you know, drive down the start of the second half, we fumbled the ball down here. We had one drive where we first, you know, Billy rips off eight yards and then we go penalty, penalty, and then there was miscommunication. We ran the wrong play and now we're back in third and long. So those are our, those are mistakes on us. And then they, you come down to the last play of the game. I mean, we got DJ running the wheel down the sidelines wide open and we fumble a snap. And, you know, we were literally one pass completion away from this, this place going bananas. Yeah. And, you know, not credit to, you know, they kept us in it. We had two defensive scores, which yep. were huge. Mm -hmm. Will Hoffman did a great job. And our onside kick teams, our special teams were huge. Yes. So everything came together. So I'm proud of them. They fought. They mm -hmm. went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They, you know, but we tell the guys, there's no moral victories here. Yeah. We expect to win these games. And they, they, it's, they, they, for them, the growth has to be they expect to win them. And I think they do. They're, they're generally disappointed that, damn it, we had them. The Dragons have two games left in the regular season. They travel to North Farmington on October 14th to take on the Raiders, then return home on October 21st to host the Celine Hornets in a non-league matchup. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV Sports. Thanks, Joe. What an entertaining game. It's too bad the Dragons lost, but they sure put up a good fight. 
And finally, the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce continues to welcome new businesses to the area with ribbon cutting ceremonies almost on a weekly basis. On Thursday, September 29th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and Orion Township dignitaries gathered at this plaza on Baldwin Road to celebrate the official grand opening of Aesthetic Theory Met Spa. Three, two, one. Yeah. It means everything to us. Um, we're a newer business here and we just want to spread awareness to our business and we want to be a participating member of this community. Thank you for coming here. We are here to stay. We invest a lot in our staff to make them as professional and as experienced to provide good service, make people feel good and look good. Aesthetic Theory Met Spa opened its first location in Gross Point in 2019. The Lake Orion location opened its doors in mid-July of 2022. General Manager Leanne Wagner is a lifelong Lake Orion native. She described the services they provide. A variety of services including Botox, um, filler, laser hair removal, chemical peels, laser resurfacing of the face, and a lot more, including lashes and brows. But we do offer complimentary consultations, so stop in and one of our nurses or estheticians would be happy to meet with you. For more information, you can call 248 499 9106 or visit lotheorymedspa.com. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.